Going back to Team Fortress 2 nowadays is a bit of a strange experience for somebody that played it when it first came out. It is the same game functionally, they haven't changed it from being a first person shooter with team based mechanics, even though it does have some new modes of play that let you do weirder things like grappling onto stuff and the one with the robots, and yet it is a very different game. Up to a point, maybe too different. And when I speak of this, I mean it at a personal level. To me, this is not the same game anymore. It has changed in ways that do not make it really all that appealing to me now. I can still see what I liked about it. I can still see the reason why I would stay up all the way up to 2 a.m. just playing it on a friend's account or on the free weekends when... I only had like three games on Steam. The free ones that came with video cards. You had Portal the First Slice, you had Half-Life 2 Deathmatch, and I think maybe Half-Life 2 Lost Coast. And possibly Peggle, I'm not sure exactly which one of them it was. But the more I look at it, the more I see not the game that I used to enjoy and play hundreds of hours of, around 328 hours of actually, that are just on my account. Not even sure if Steam had a time played counter when the game was released, honestly. I of the some 300 hours in a game, <laughs> that's nothing, we have thousands of hours in game released last week. I know, compared to most people I probably spent like nothing in the game. Heck, I I've spent more time in Rainbow Six Siege since then, and I think it's because I only had it available to me a couple of times for a very short amount of hours at the beginning that I enjoyed it so much. It was uh, what we would call a limited supply, a rare occurrence, if you will. I didn't get a full version of it myself up until 2008, and that's because I had written some articles in a magazine for somebody, so they would publish them in their name. I, I used to ghostwrite for people, and I got the info this too as a gift, well, as payment. I think that was just after the heavy update, because I remember getting the uh, achievement of killing or firing an X number of bullets while I was in the match and people congratulating me. What they did not know is that during the free weekends, because I had basically no expectation of me ever being able to play the actual full version of the game, like not full version, but the one I wanted to, I uh, entered some uh, servers that allowed you to cheese the achievement system so I could get the other weapons for the other characters. And I did make quite a lot of progress with the achievements. I didn't get all of them. And when I actually started playing like for real on my account, I, I wish there was an option to reset achievements. There wasn't. There was one to reset stats, which I used. So the slate would be wiped clean so I could start anew and enjoy the game as it was. And I really did enjoy it. I used to play it in the evenings, but mostly I used to try and play in the mornings. Right before I went to work, writing crappy news or some Nintendo review thing that I was told I wasn't supposed to make them negative. I used to have a crappy job back then. They um, That year, actually, they deleted by accident my email address from their server because the boss couldn't tell the difference between a megabyte and a gigabyte. And that's where I had all my reviews written. I kept them there. Didn't keep them locally because I got tired of them after writing them. Just sent them and... It was a crappy place. But hey, Team Fortress 2. Got Team Fortress 2 for it. What I enjoyed about it was just the sheer joy you could find on some servers. People would be talking, making jokes, cracking wise and... I'm not sure if a lot of people did this, but there was a bit of a lean towards role-playing your character. Now, I know this may sound odd, uh, considering some old player FPS, how, how would you role-play? Well, the characters, as you know, have characteristics, that's their shtick. They're not just the tank, the medic, they're the heavy and the medic. But they have personality, so you expect them to act in a certain way, and players would sometimes do that on certain servers. I like playing a pyro because I try to do the dumbest things possible and get away with them as often as I could. Also, I set everything on fire. And I enjoy the fact that it was well, fun. And to this day, it is still quite a fun video game to play. It's got great classes, it's got great maps, it's got a superb style of comedic bloodshed. Not to mention that the, all the trappings that came with it, the, uh, the Meet the Team videos, those are fantastic. The comics, they were ludicrous. The updates just kept on pouring and becoming more and more ridiculous. Remember the uh, Spy vs. Sniper update when they had that big board of things that were happening and if you got hints there of 
there may be one day being a Dracula in there. And the updates just kept on rolling. And the seasonal events with Halloween, with the Gastelic Gibbous, the Mac update, the Engineer update. And then in 2010 came the Man Economy update. This was unexpected. It added a store to the game, it added trading for items in the game. They weren't just helping people farm achievements to get items, no, you could just give them to them. It added crates and loot drops, which I was fine with at first. I mean, okay, yeah, we get some stuff, or we have to pay to open the crates. Okay, yeah, I get, I mean, sort of works, I guess. And then we started getting the uh, crafting system, which came around this time. We got even more cosmetics, we got more weapons that we could not actually gain by playing the game just by drops or getting them from other people or crafting them. We got paint to color cosmetics, we got uh, weapons with strange effects on them that counted kills, we got all sorts of particle effects that made you not really understand what's going on. The game went free, which on the one side, uh, because I used to play in the morning, sometimes it would just be me. There, There's an old, man, I just call it old, Igni Solus, I think it was called. There is a um, Team Fortress 2 machinima made in Team Fortress 2, not in the Source Movie Maker. There wasn't one back then. About a pyro that's alone on the map until he finds, I think it was a scout or a heavy. And then that player leaves and it's just the pyro running around the map trying to amuse himself. That was me in the mornings often because there was nobody on the servers. When it went free suddenly there were people everywhere i could enjoy it with as many people as i wanted to anytime i wanted to every time it was a bundle of absolute joy and also brought with it well every game that goes free to play has problems with the players there is no standard for entry anymore so you get the screamers the swearers the i don't care you were at work for eight hours i'm gonna scream into my mic like a little 12 year old that has been beaten by his parents enough or was beaten too much and ruin your day screw you man you don't deserve to have fun in a game you paid money for or worked for i got it for free and if you ban me i'm gonna be back on a different account with all my friends and we're gonna ruin your day even more because we're in title pieces of crap living advertisements for birth control but the beauty was that the Fortress 2 had community run servers you could find the community that you liked and still play with them sure there'd be the odd rando coming in but for the most part you had regulars you had people you would always play with at least from time to time and the new people that came in they were kept in check but even so the the game was changing, so many weapons that you couldn't keep really track of anymore. You really didn't understand, what, what, is this the same character? It doesn't even look like this. And the heavy now looks like the soldier if you put that skin on him. The demo man is now a melee character. It went through so many changes that at a point I couldn't really recognize it anymore. And I was okay with some of the changes, giving the pyro more pyro wish secondary weapons. Yeah, I love that. Giving the uh, heavy and Natasha to slow down the goddamn scouts. Like that as well. I used to love the ambassador back when you could just headshot somebody from the opposite side of the map. And I'll try to kill them, murder fight them. Like give them a real proper face tap with a bullet. And the huntsman. The huntsman made the sniper usable for people that can't really aim compared to what other snipers tend to do which is aim quite well at your head constantly but when we started adding community stuff which okay uh, one way this made a lot of people that worked their ass to create items for the game actually get rewarded so that's an important thing to remember valve rewarded the people that made those items those cosmetics those skins they gave them the money to allow them to succeed in life and that's wonderful in the process that they put so much of the stuff in the game that it made it kind of daunting and he used to get spammed with a million crate drops you played too much yeah it made it a bit nonsensical and then they added matchmaking and then they added the um the, the operation coin thing with the gunmetal update or something like that and it just became like, like something unrecognizable it's like the base game is still there but it's so buried beneath all these layers of other things you start to realize that Team Fortress 2 kind of outstayed its welcome for Valve a long time ago. Like around the time when I started playing it like for realsies, in 2009 I think, 2008 back then. Because like I said, the servers in the morning were kind of empty, not a lot of people were playing it, and probably not a lot of people were buying it, so they had the economy to make it more uh, more profitable, some would say. But no, Team Fortress 2, because it outstayed its welcome, became the guinea pig. It became the means by which Valve would test out any idea it had, and it 
it knew that no matter what it did to the game, that it was okay. Not a lot of people will get super duper upset about it. So they just thought things like the Steam Marketplace, the inventory system, trading, things that they would then use to power other video games. And this can be seen in the success of Counter-Strike GO and of Dota 2. Did it come out at sacrifice of Team Fortress 2? Because if, if you go into the game now and look at the old uh, the commentaries when they say about how important it was to get the silhouette just right so every character can be identified just by like a half a second of a glance in a corner somewhere, that's gone. But in terms of even identifying the character, what exactly are you identifying? Because they have so many weapons now that if you were to come back after a year or two or a couple of years, you'd not even understand what they have at their disposal now. What tools? What abilities? Team Fortress 2 was sacrificed for Valve to be able to move forward. Was it worth it? Well, like I said, the game was teetering on being kind of empty around 2009, so I think in a way it, it was. I mean, it allowed the game to continue to survive and to be constantly one of the most popular games on Steam, but it did lose that spark it had, that beauty. Then again, I'm not gonna say, oh, we should make a vanilla... No, the console version of Team Fortress 2 is the vanilla version and it is so, so a cake. Like I said, I liked some of the updates, I enjoyed them, I, I liked what they brought, but then it was just too much. And the matchmaking system kind of ruined the whole, oh, let's make a community server. Yeah, there's still community servers, but they're, well, they're not the main focus anymore, it's not what people really drive towards. They're, they mainly just use the matchmaking and then never really bother creating their own communities with people, you know, to have a shared experience, uh, an experience that's common to them. You know, the, the role-playing aspects I used to enjoy back then. The lazy afternoons were playing like two hours of two fort. Because although some say it's, oh, it's a horrible map, it's, it's one of the greatest maps ever made. It's, it's a relaxing map. To some people, they relax by murdering a bunch of faceless monsters mobs in World of Warcraft or in Destiny 2 and collecting some crappy loot that they're never gonna really use. To me, relaxing is doing stuff like camping out in the sewers at Two Fort, what an engineer, smashing spies in the face, mounting assaults on the enemy fortress, executing sneaky incursions with the soldier from above, because why not, pushing the cart through Gold Rush. Remember when when the first map had the exposed area, like right after the uh, second uh, waypoint or checkpoint? I remember Dust Bowl. I remember those days. I do. I kind of miss them. I can only play the game as it is now. I can't play it, but it's not as enjoyable. It's not as nice. And by nice, I mean now it seems more chaotic. It seems hard to understand. It requires more processing power from my brain. It's more akin these days to something like League of Legends when all the the spam of visual effects was in full swing where you couldn't understand where your character was on the screen. Bits of it are kind of a farce these days. And instead of evolving, instead of actually adding something that would fundamentally change it maybe for the better, like adding the, the 10th class, the civilian that used to be teased constantly, they just changed the actual classes they already had into something different, sort of like League of Legends did with Fiora or Mordekaiser, or every character I actually was good with. So what could have Delve done to make Team Fortress more to my liking? Well, the crates so would have been a nice thing to not have in there, limit the cosmetics a bit, try to keep it more in focus with the original idea of making everything easily identifiable without all these super duper extra mega weird effects plastered everywhere, or perhaps making Team Fortress 3. Something that would be from the onset built with that in mind. Not have cosmetics like that shoehorn in there and just make everything else seem like fluff. Like an excuse. And have the weapons from the start. All of them. So you can understand what they are, what they can be, what you can do with this character, not just wander blindly and awkwardly and unknowingly through the game, not really understanding what what people are doing and why. Why is that thing shooting bubbles? It's supposed to shoot fire. Oh, I have pyrovision on. Okay, I think, sure. But that ship sailed a long time ago. It's actually why I was kind of attracted to Overwatch a long time. I still kind of enjoy Overwatch. But Blizzard is going to the League of Legends direction of, oh, let's change every character constantly so that people can't really have fun. And I gotta say, it, Team Fortress 2 avoided this for so, so long because Team Fortress 2 did not ship with a competitive mode. Screw the competitive mode, I hope it dies. Because you just know, you absolutely just know, and I'm not the only person saying this. If Team Fortress 2 had a competitive mode, there would have been no WM1 Pyro. 
There would have been no roleplaying, there would have been no experimentation, there would have been no fun in the game. Just a succession of screechers complaining that their stats, their scores are not as good as they're supposed to because they're elite, no other. And you get the idea. Oh, and th there were competitive people in Team Fortress 2. I uh, had run-ins with the Romanian competitive scene of Team Fortress 2 run by an asshole. I got, well, they didn't become friends with him, but we collaborated on a couple of things and still competitive brings out the asshole in a lot of people. Actually, no, I think it reveals the inner asshole they always were. Because people that aren't assholes, they tend to not be assholes even in competitive. Or if they feel like it's turning them into assholes, they just stop and do something productive instead. So at least that, that is something Valve did superbly well. Team Fortress 2, as it was a long time ago, was also one of those things. And so ends my rant about how Team Fortress 2 used to be great back in my day. Now it's just horrible. It sucks. Kids today don't know what quality is. Back in my day. I just think it was nicer back then. A bit simpler. But it will always be fun.